We still have elections and not just presidential one, there's an election down in Texas where you got a progressive versus a corporate Democrat. And that progressive joins us now, Perwaz Aguan. He's running in Texas 7 against Lizzie Fletcher. Uh, Perwaz, uh, welcome to the show, brother. Hey, Jenk, thanks for having us down here. No problem. So uh, look, I'm gonna start uh, by asking the question I'm asking all the time now because of past experience. And then we'll get to your campaign and we'll get to your issues and we'll get to your fight with APAC and the corporate Democrat and that's all interesting. Uh, but how can we trust you? Uh, I, we have, ha and not because of you in particular, I'm just asking a legitimate question that our audience is now asking of all candidates. Because uh, we've seen people come on here and tell us over and over again that when they get to Congress, they're really gonna challenge the establishment and they never do, never. So how do we know you're not going to do the same exact thing? I, uh, I think it starts with moral courage. You know, I, uh, I think moral courage is a rare commodity in this day and age. Right? It takes moral courage to stand up against a system. Uh, and you know, you have every right to be uh, skeptical. You know, I don't think uh, there's a proven track record of people uh, that are progressive saying they'll stay progressive. You know, what you get with me is uh, we don't answer to anybody but the constituents in this new district. It's a completely new district. It's it's where I grew up. Uh, we don't take any lobbyist money, no corporate PAC money, no special interest dollars. There's very few people that abide by that in Congress. You know, I don't answer to any lobbyist groups. No powerful forces pull my strings. I'm only here to respond to the people in my district. And what makes me different is politics was never really in the plan for me. You know, I come from a very working class family. Uh, my dad came to this country with nothing in his pocket. Uh, I've experienced poverty. You know, we grew up in some of the poorest neighborhoods in Houston. Uh, he was blue collar his whole life. I've seen what it's like to struggle. Uh, you know, I, I would be I'd be doing a disservice uh, to the people in this district, you know, which has some of the poorest communities in Houston, uh, some of the highest uninsured rates. Uh, it's the largest Asian American community in the entire state of Texas now. Uh, I would be sorely embarrassed if anyone ever said that Pervez sold out or didn't do what he said he was going to do. And, and I think the thing that keeps me going is uh, my family is Gujarati Indian. You know, my great grandparents actually marched with Gandhi in Katia Ward. I, I keep a picture of uh, you know him in my office. I have his book. Uh, it's one of my uh, biggest influences. I think uh, if we're gonna live up to kind of that legacy, it means speaking truth to power, having moral courage, not bending to the, to the forces in Congress. We're not going in, I mean it, Jenk, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. We're not going in to play nice. We're not going in to, to, to play by their rules. The system is broken, nothing works anymore. And the more politicians you have that, that, uh, that lie to you, uh, that, that that say they're gonna do things that don't do them. It fuels me as a young 31 year old running to be not just the first Asian American ever elected to Congress from Texas, but the youngest member of the delegation. And I wanna, I wanna prove to people we can change that. And, and that requires moral courage. And I hope that this campaign can inspire other people that we can't give up hope. There are many of us out there who are willing to get in the arena and fight it out. Okay, by the way, if you do sell out, I, I'm gonna uh, tell everybody that you sold out Gandhi. Uh, I'm not, and I'm not playing, okay? So, uh, and look, what do we mean? So I don't mean, hey, do silly votes that don't make a difference or yell and scream about if it's not gonna lead to any kind of change. I don't need any of that. But let me ask you a super tough question. So paid family leave sitting at 84%, including 74% of Republicans. It is super popular in the country. Yet, there's not a single Democrat proposing it. There's not a single Democrat doing a goddamn thing about it. And then they will tell you, and when you get there, they will tell you, don't be ridiculous. That's not what we're discussing now. You need to be more productive, okay? And that's not gonna pass, There's Republicans control the House. So sit down, and they're gonna, and if you don't, you're being really rude to your colleagues. You're the worst Democrat. New York Times write an article about this son of a bitch who's ruining Democrats' chances, okay? All right, what do you do? It's easy to say, okay, I'm gonna stand up to them. But what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do to pass paid family leave? So uh, my wife and I just had our first baby eight months ago. I have a baby boy at home. Uh, I think it's unacceptable, right, that we spend more on defense than any other country, right? Uh, we spend more than the next nine countries combined. Uh, if you cut the defense budget by 20%, you get paid maternity, you know, paternally for every uh, parent in this country, right? You know, uh, my experience as a new father uh, and my wife going back to work, me starting this campaign, uh, we have sorely. Uh, miss the mark. You know, we've made it harder for people to have children in this country. Uh, and to your question, Jenk, I think the most important thing is people don't really understand uh, who we are as a campaign, but what I represent. I have a big flag of Malcolm X I'm looking at in my office. It says justice by any means necessary. But he famously said, uh, you know, I have a lot of our speeches that we write are informed by his speeches, right? Especially the last three years of his life. He said, a man who stands for nothing will fall for anything. 
Uh, I think it's important to be principled and bold. We're not going in there to play by their rules. They can say what they want, but truth is incontrovertible. Gandhi famously said that it's okay to be an army of one as long as you're speaking the truth, right? Uh, people can say one person, one progressive, you know, the squad against the machine. It's okay if you're outnumbered as long as you're preaching the truth, right? Look at Bernie Sanders, right? You can go up there. And, and it's okay to have them hate you because we don't like their club. Their club is full of corporate lobbyist money. Their club is full of people who don't understand what our generation needs, right? Their club is full of people whose opinions don't matter. And the more of us we can get elected, the less their club is them and it becomes us, you know, that are actually trying to pay, pass, you know, a, a relief for working families. Right? I, I think the tragedy of this country is that sentiment you just shared, that 80% of Americans want this, right? 80% of Americans want universal health care, which is why I have this up on my wall, right? Uh, this side, right? Uh, but you know, quite frankly, nothing, none of it gets done because our politicians are bought and paid for before they get to DC. And, and you know, I want to have uh, kind of not, I don't want this campaign to just be, uh, you know, uh, a, 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 an election for me, Jenk. I want this to be a statement for young progressives that we can have the courage to run, to eschew the machine, to say enough is enough. We don't want any part of this uh, uh, system that you've built that really just isn't going to take America to where it needs to go. And the more of us that run, the less of the people exist in Congress that don't want to even put a bill on the on the floor for paid family leave, right? So it's moral courage for me. It's about being principled when you get in there, and that's what you're always going to get from me. Because you know, for me, uh, a lot of my principles stems from my faith, uh, and and I think uh, you know, me doing this work. Um, it is a way for me to show people that you know Muslim Americans, you know, we're, we're going to be out there and we're going to fight for what's right and correct. And, and I'm proud I get to represent what is now the largest Asian, Arab, Indian, Pakistani, and Muslim community in the entire state of Texas, packed into one district. Yeah, um, if you uh, get into Congress and you say Chuck Schumer uh, and Hakeem Jeffries are bought and paid for, I'm gonna buy you the biggest steak dinner of your life. Okay, but you, I'll do it. Like you're, I'm on record. I'm on record. You're on the you're record. Hear me do it. We okay. get. We're, we're, I'm okay. on the record on this. The problem with politics is we lack moral courage. We have to have. What is America's moral north star anymore? Is it to accept Mr. Wall Street and APAC Hakeem Jeffries? You know, we can't. We need term limits. I'm on record that three terms in the House, two terms in the Senate, and you're out. It's about public service. We got to have young people get in the office and we got to have term limits. You know, look at Mitch McConnell. He had a stroke on the floor, uh, you know, while he was speaking in, in, on TV. The, the problem is we're scared to speak our hearts in this country. People are yearning for something different. For God's sakes, look at the polls. I'm in my district alone, 70% of the voters in this district hate Congress. Right, you know, I, I, I want I want public service to be something noble. I want people to believe that you can elect an average everyday person to politics and to Congress again. Right, I'm I'm a dad. I'm 31 years old. I'm not a politician. Uh, you know, I, I build renewable energy for a living. That that's been my whole career. Uh, I've been in the energy space, building Texas's largest wind and solar projects. Right, I want to show people that your politicians don't have to be Ted Cruz or Greg Abbott or or Hakeem Jeffries. Right, the, I think he's a complete hypocrite, by the way. You know, Hakeem Jeffries is funded by some of the biggest lobbyist groups, special interest groups, corporate PACs, and he represents the Democratic Party, one that I want to change. And it yields painfully to change, but we're change agents, right? We're disrupting the system. And I think it doesn't change unless we start fighting back. All right. And Perva is on here because he's already shown some fight back, and I appreciate that. So, uh, you know, taking on APAC and, and those special interest groups. Is a hell of a thing. Uh, they have spent um, in the last like what they spent forty million dollars trying to defeat progressives. So why did you go into that hornet's nest right out of the gate? Uh, given that if you get any kind of traction, they're going to come and spend millions of dollars against you. I think, Jenk. First, it's all about human rights. Second, it's about not just APAC. All lobbyist money. We got to get all lobbyist money, all super PAC money. We need immediate campaign finance reform. I'm running in a new district. It's 80% almost black and brown communities. It is the most diverse district in the state. It has the state's largest Arab, Palestinian, Muslim, Middle Easterner, Asian population, right? Uh, almost a quarter of this district is Asian and Arab. Uh, this district, uh, quite frankly, uh, has a lot of folks that are from Palestinian communities. Right, we have to speak up on what's objective, and justice isn't right. Uh, justice is objective, right? It's not selective, right? We can't speak up for one community, and not speak up for another. Uh, so, for me, as someone who grew up in this community, it's not just APAC 
we're taking a stand against, you know, uh, we're running against someone whose whose neighborhood is no longer in the district, right? They were drawn out with gerrymandering. Uh, we can't have someone taking thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands, or even millions from oil and gas companies, their political action committees, health insurance companies, uh, foreign lobbies, and then say that the system's fair, right? If we get all lobbyist money out of politics, we can start having freer and fairer and cleaner elections. It's about people's voices not being diluted by millions of dollars of uh, propaganda being uh, you know, poured in from outside the city or state. Uh, so we're gonna address it straight on. We have to speak truth. You know, we can't we can't be people anymore that sit on the sidelines. We as a collective body of young Americans, right, understand money runs politics. And if we don't talk about it, it won't change. We're not here to talk about uh, smiles and rainbows and butterflies. There are lives at stake in this country, whether it's defense, defense spending, gun control, universal health care, border policies. Uh, everything's being run by a corporatocracy at this point. And I, I view it as my job, you know, as a young American uh, that was born and you know that was born in this country, that was raised here in this district, that has a son to want to leave something more, you know, uh, meaningful and beautiful behind for him. So we're going to address these issues straight up. You know, I'm not okay with someone that is funded by all these corporations, all these lobbying groups, to come in to this district and spew propaganda. We're gonna fight back and that means everybody that's a part of spreading lies and fear and propaganda will hear from our campaign and that includes APAC. And you say it takes courage, well we're not gonna back down. It costs a lot more money to spread a lie than the truth. And we're going door to door and spreading the truth. Campaign finance reform, universal health care, get big money out of politics, immediate climate action. So, Perez, before I get to Lizzie Fletcher and the media, uh, we'll have the, your uh, websites linked down below in the description box. But what's what's the website? It's uh, www.aguanforus.com. A G W A N F O R U S dot com. All right. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if you've dealt with mainstream media at all, uh, but the very first thing that they will ask you is, "Well, Lizzie Fletcher's a good Democrat." Why do you need to run against her? Why, you know, uh, this seems like it's hurting the party's unity. So why are you hurting the Democrats, Pervez, they'll ask. Because the Democrats don't stand for what they should anymore, right? Uh, I, I think the two party system is tragic. But I think what's even more tragic is the Republicans and Democrats are funded by the same super PACs, the same PACs, the same corporate PACs, the same defense lobbyists, the same pharmaceutical companies, the same Wall Street banks, the same foreign lobbies, right, as one another. Uh, how are they any different if they're gonna keep taking money and, and tow this corporate agenda, right? It's it's killing working people. You know, student debt's at an all time high. People can't buy homes in this country anymore. Private equity companies are buying residential homes and then renting them out. These, these are serious issues, right? The problem is we have to reform the Democratic Party from the inside. I mean, we can't go and even fix the Republican Party, right? Donald Trump, we know what he said. And he's still polling on top. He had a man yesterday, or you know, this week. Uh, you know, I'm not going to take his name, but he said climate change is a hoax. So that's the Republican Party. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna stay away from that. At least within this party, someone with my name, Mohammed Pervez, can at least run and have a chance of winning because we're running in a safe Democratic seat. Uh, the problem is this district, Jenk. Forty percent of families uh, with children live in poverty in some of the zip codes. It has two of the highest uninsured zip codes in the uh, uninsured zip codes in the entire state of Texas. I'm not sure if you know this, Texas has some of the highest uninsured rates in the country. It's killing people to have a for-profit healthcare system, literally, right? We have some of the worst health outcomes in the country here. We're some of the highest uh, uh, in mass shootings and gun deaths. Uh, gun lobby, health insurance lobby, right? I mean, Fletcher is taking money from oil and gas companies. It's the hottest July on record. She voted against uh, capping oil prices and, and pump prices, right? Because she's funded by Exxon and Chevron, right? We outraised her two quarters in a row, and it'll be a third one because it's a strong quarter in individual donations. More people in this city, in this state, in this country support us on an individual donor basis. All of her money is coming in from big corporations, big lobbyists. You know, uh, people say we're hurting the Democratic Party. No, Fletcher's hurting the Democratic Party. Her brand of politics, that entire new Democrat coalition is hurting progress in this country. Unless we start electing more people, Jenk, that reject the current system, don't take corporate money, don't take special interest dollars, we will never see change. Because those politicians, you know, it's, it's legalized bribery and we want to end it. So we need to start electing politicians that don't answer to anybody but the people in their district. All right, well, you're talking my language, that's for sure. and. Uh, 
and you and it's certainly strong and you've acted that way and you've done a great job of fundraising from the grassroots so that that's definitely positive so i'll end on this um you know obviously you're a progressive but when you get in what's at the top of your agenda i think we need to start pushing the envelope we need to start pushing the possibilities of what's we need to start pushing the realm of possibilities, right? I think the problem right now is we don't want to tow just the progressive agenda. We don't want to, you know, just tow, you know, within the realm of the ideas of what people think is possible. I want to get in there and start talking big, big bold ideas, right? National renewable portfolio standards, right? High voltage DC lines transmitting power from rural areas in the Midwest that cross account, you know, that 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 cut across state lines, right? I'm talking national immediate renewable energy policy. That's what I used to teach, it's my bread and butter. Uh, immediate campaign finance reform. They're not gonna like me, Jenk. I'm gonna get in there and every week, week in, week out, I'm gonna put bills on the floor talking about campaign finance reform. I'm gonna wanna censure people, right? That shouldn't be allowed to even come in this country in the first place. I'm talking human rights violators that are all the way across the world. We're gonna talk about uh, difficult things that the Democrats don't wanna face, and that's foreign policy, right? We're gonna talk about uh, Israel and Palestine. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, uh, South Asia. We're going to. I'm, I'm going to put bills on the floor immediately to support uh, Medicare for all. Right, right here. I think it's really important uh, that we elect people that aren't just going to play by the rules. Uh, that not going to care about what committees they're on. Uh, for me, it's about disruption, and disruption is what makes change. So we're going to go in there and we're going to disrupt the system because this system is not working. All right, I lied. One more thing. Uh, you know, you emphasize Medicare for all. I read the story about your dad and uh, and how he passed away because he didn't have health care. Uh, t- tell us about that real quick. Uh, it's the number one reason I'm running. You know, uh, Texas is home to the oil industry. Uh, it's a very cyclical industry. Uh, you know, my mom, she was a stay at home mom. Uh, my dad was the breadwinner. He came to this country with a few bucks in his pocket. Uh, you know, he didn't speak much English. He actually drove a cab and, and worked at a convenience store in New York before he moved us down to Houston. Uh, you know, dad was a he's a proud Asian American dad, right? You know, he's not going to tell people when he's struggling. So my wife and I were living in Boston. You know, I just you know started school and work up there. My brother, you know, he was still in college and dad was paying his way through. Dad, you know, drove a forklift uh, in Texas oil industry. I come from a you know a family of very little means. You know, we're very lower middle income. Uh, you know, I, I used to ride the bus uh, to school, to a new school I went to for high school, where kids would show up in BMWs and Mercedes Benzes, right? Um, and and for me, I've seen what it's like for folks to struggle, and there's very little safety net. So when when my when my dad actually, um, you know, uh, he lost his job, he didn't tell us he lost his health insurance. Uh, he was a diabetic, you know, he had early onset heart disease. I think the tragedy of this country, and what really jolted me awake, was his sudden passing. Uh, and the tragedy of this country is, you know, we uh, have the worst health outcomes for spending the most, right, of the OECD countries. We spend more in healthcare than any of the ten, OE, uh, than any of the other OECD countries, right, per capita. Uh, medical bankruptcies are the number one cause of bankruptcy in this country. Still, uh, you know, 80% of the chemotherapy market is controlled by, you know, just a handful of companies. Uh, United Health Group, Cigna, Aetna, they're making billions of dollars of profits. I mean, those are th- th- those are dollars that could be going. To, to subsidizing insulin, right? Those would be we should it should be free, right? No one should be struggling to pay for insulin. No one should be struggling to pay for uh, necessary cancer medication. We shouldn't be being uh, six. We shouldn't be seeing six figure bills for cancer. So when my dad passed away. It was so tragic and sudden. I went on a journey to figure out what happened. He passed away at the age of 54, and for me, that's too early in a, in a country with a life expectancy of 70 something. And I find it, you know, uh, it may have been preventable had we been able to find him. Uh, the care he needed. Uh, so I made a commitment to myself: if I was going to do something with my life, uh, I wanted it, you know, uh, to be where I could I could prevent other folks from losing their loved ones earlier than needed, right? So, so that's why uh, universal healthcare is my number one policy platform. Uh, and you know, the minute I get on the floor of the Congress, uh, you're going to see that the health insurance companies aren't going to like me. Uh, they don't like me right now, and they're going to hate me when I get in. Because if this country is going to see progress, right, it's going to be painful. Uh, but I'm willing to, you know, go against the grain. We're going to be swimming upstream against their money, their influence. Uh, but I think little by little, Obama failed with single payer. Uh, that entire 2008 to 2010 saga, you know, was dark. But I think we're 12, 15 years after this now, right? So we 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 are going to take that baton and finish. You know, we're going to cross that line. We have to get universal health care in this country. So it's the one thing I'm going to fight for for sure. Yeah, it was a little easier to believe you because corporate donors, in essence, killed your dad. Um, this country very much wants universal health care. Some, like you said, 
70 to 80 percent of the country wants it, uh, but the corporate donors prevented by buying off both Republicans and Democrats. All and right. my opponent. Yep. Uh, Pero Zaguan running, uh, running in Texas 7. Well, like I said, we'll have the link down below for his uh, website. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Hey, Jen. Thank you, team.